Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over this chilly pattern which is going to be happening over the next 5 or so days and then it should really calm down into much milder uh, conditions especially for anywhere east of the Rockies as you get west of the Rockies that's where some of the colder temperatures could take place. We're going to be giving you an idea of what you should be expecting for your temperatures uh, during these various days uh, and we're also going to be giving you a look at the next 5 to 7 days in terms of uh, how cold it will be, how warm it will be for your specific specific area. So here's what the current National Weather Service page looks like and it is actually quite quiet for much of the country. We have uh, some red flag warnings in effect for parts of north central Kansas. We have some flood watches up for parts of eastern Nebraska. If you, any of you guys are wondering why that is, it's because of an ice jam uh, over one of the rivers near that area and that's causing some flooding issues throughout that area. I kind of read their discussion and that's what they were talking about. They also had uh, some flood warnings scattered throughout parts of the Tennessee Valley back through the lower Ohio Valley. That's where you see the light green uh, kind of uh, scattered about throughout that region. We also have some wind advisories in the light brown, and that's for coastal New England and then back through central and southern New England as well. And then for parts of uh, northern Maine and into east central parts of New Hampshire, we have some high wind warnings, especially in higher elevations. And then wind chill advisories are up for parts of northern Maine and northern New Hampshire as well. Yesterday, the continental United States high temperature uh, was in Brighton, Florida. They got to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. The low temperature for the entire continental United States. That was in northern North Dakota and Langdon, North Dakota. They got to negative 24 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest rainfall or precipitation report uh, was in Real Foot National Wildlife uh, Refuge. Uh, and they got 5.6 inches of rainfall. That's in northwestern Tennessee right uh, through there. And there isn't any snowfall data available, unfortunately, from yesterday. Uh, the uh, snowfall report website that I usually go to to get the numbers uh, is down from the National Weather Service, so I think they're having some maintenance issue on their website. So we're going to hopefully, hopefully they get that back up by tomorrow or the day after. So as soon as possible, uh, hopefully they do get that back up. So here's what the European model is showing for the low temperatures. We're going to play through the low temperatures, then we're going to look at the departure from normal, and then we're going to look at the upper air, and we're going to look at where all this cold air is coming from, and where it's, and where all the warm air is going to be coming from. So, and this would be by tomorrow morning. We're actually fairly above average for much of the country. Uh, you still have 20s and uh, mid-20s and lower for many of these areas in the northeast, as well as for areas that are north and west of this line right here. Uh, that's where we're dealing with fairly chilly temperatures below 30 degrees, but still, it is actually a little bit above normal for this time of year. You see those cold temperatures back through northern New England. That's where you have actual temperatures uh, uh, near zero degrees, and you're going to have wind chills that are closer to negative 30, negative 40 degrees degrees in some of those areas in parts of northern Maine, northern New Hampshire. And then if we play this through, this would be by Thursday. We have by Thursday some of those colder temperatures uh, moving a little bit closer and then by Fridays when they really start to hit. So we have warmer temperatures spiking back through uh, into the central and uh, much of the Great Plains in general. And then we have cold temperatures rebounding on the eastern side of that into parts of the Ohio Valley, the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, all the way down to the southeast, which actually at this point is a little bit below average. We see actual temperatures in parts of upstate New York, New Hampshire, a few isolated areas, maybe even in Maine that get uh, below zero for the actual temperatures and of course your wind chills are going to be much lower than that because it will be fairly decently gusty not as gusty as it was today in many of these areas but still you'll have winds gusting to 20 maybe 25 miles per hour at times in those areas and then here would be by Saturday, March 6th, we're looking at that trough still into the east, and when you have a trough into the east, you have to have a ridge somewhere, and that ridge is going to be up through the Great Plains, uh, just because this trough is a little bit further east than, it's than it typically would be, which means that you actually have a ridge back through uh, the middle of the country, and then you have another trough back through the western part of the country. So we have troughs on either coast, and then we have a big ridge back through into the central part of the country. Uh, if this 
this, by the way, if this was a little bit further uh, to the west, so if we had the cold air maybe a little bit more like this, and I'll draw this in uh, pink, I guess, uh, if you had it more somewhat like this, then you would have a very stormy track up the east coast. So we still, uh, this is a very cold pattern. If this were to be a little bit further to the west, if this were to be a little bit further, uh, a little bit different, we would have a much different picture in terms of what we're dealing with. And then here would be by March 7th, still cold for a lot of these areas, more widespread below zero temperatures, uh, and it is still fairly cold in the teens, single digits for a lot of areas in the Northeast and Great Lakes. And then that cold air is really just subjugated to parts of the East Coast, where uh, if you get anywhere about east of the Appalachians, you're not dealing with anything overly or ridiculously cold uh, in those areas. And then it's still hanging on by Tuesday. You can see that for the Northeast, the Great Lakes, actually much of the country, except for for the southeast, uh, the, the only area in this case that's actually below normal by this point is still the southeast. The rest of the country, uh, all the way back to the Rockies, is above normal by this point. So we start to go into a bit of a milder pattern. So here's your temperature anomalies, and we're going to play it through. Uh, the oranges, the yellows, the reds, uh, even some of the browns that you're going to start to see pop up. And that's where you're dealing with above normal temperatures. And this is all in Fahrenheit. So this is the departure from normal. Uh, and then the below normal temperatures, that's in the blues, the greens, the purples, even some of those pinks as well, uh, depending on how intense the cold air is. So you can see by this point, this is Wednesday morning, Actually, it's fairly warm for the northern part of the country. The southeast and the south central states are where we're dealing with the colder, uh, the colder temperatures. And then here would be by Thursday morning. You can see it's a little bit uh, different, but the main th uh, thing that I'm picking up on on this frame is that we have this big area of colder back through here. This is going to dip down a little bit further south, and that's what's going to unleash some of that colder air into the eastern United States. You can see all that warm air back through the northern plains, so they're enjoying some seasonably very warm temperatures for that area uh, and it's definitely going to start to feel like at least in those areas uh, like uh, late spring maybe even the early summer in some of those areas and of course uh, late spring and early summer in North Dakota is not the same as late spring or early summer in Florida for example so it's all dependent on where exactly you are and what you're uh, you typically used to and then here to be uh, Friday morning March 5th, we have that cold air that uh, was originally in Quebec and Ontario, Canada, dipped down into the eastern United States. We have temperatures that are near about negative uh, or 10 degrees below normal, up to about 15 degrees below normal in some of those areas in the northeast as well. But you can see that stretches all the way down to the Gulf Coast. So this is expanding through the entire eastern United States. And then what we're going to see is that although on this frame it does expand, it's actually going to start to shrink after this. So we're going to start to see it kind of be closed in by the warm air and kind of limit itself to this area right here. So this is really the only area that's going to be below normal uh, for the most amount of time, although it really won't be that cold or that overly cold even in those areas. And you can see that by Sunday morning, it is getting colder for some of these areas, but you can see the warm air is really trying to overtake. You have all that warm air back through the northern plains, central Canada, and that's shoving this cold air out of the eastern United States. So if we look at your next frame, you can see how significantly it was shifted all the way down to the immediate east coast you go about a couple hundred miles away from the coast and you're really dealing with actually fairly normal or even above normal conditions for many of those areas and then by Tuesday is when you really start to feel the heat for a lot of these areas we're dealing with above normal conditions everywhere except the southeast and the west coast uh, so really an interesting pattern where we have all this warm air and just a few pockets of colder air and then if you were to go to the next frame all that cold air pretty much fizzles out even the southeast gets into a bit of the colder temperatures so here's what your upper air map looks like at 500 millibars which is a few thousand feet up in the atmosphere now in this area right here or in this general shading is what you would expect with a low uh, a low pressure and that's where you get mainly cold air and storminess uh, if you're in the yellows and oranges and the reds even that's where you're in an area of high pressure and that's where you're most likely to be milder drier and warmer for many of those areas so we're gonna see how the all this uh, all this cold and warm air is gonna interact in in the atmosphere so what you see here is that we're dealing with uh, actually fairly big of a ridge back through the central part of the country we have a cutoff low back through parts of Arizona and Utah right here and then we have a general shape of a trough into the eastern part of the country somewhat like this and then you can see that ridge back through the central part of the country and if we move this on this would be by Thursday morning 
here's by Friday morning so what you actually see if we were to go uh, back one frame you can see that the ridge actually build a, uh, built a little bit uh, more further to the north at, back here in the Atlantic and that meant that this low pressure this area of cold air actually shifted further west instead of continuing to move east so that's the type of pattern when we're in a very very backwards pattern and that's usually how March is it's a very interesting month month in terms of the forecast and tracking it so we have this dip in the jet stream into the eastern part of the country especially the east coast really anywhere from the Appalachians Appalachians uh, westward isn't not really dealing with too much in the way of cold air it's mainly warm actually for those areas and then you see that that cutoff low which originated in the southwest moved to the south central states is now back through the southeast so that's just bringing some of those uh, cooler temperatures back through the southeast we also have that bigger uh, low pressure system back through into parts of Newf Newfoundland and uh, Newfoundland and Labrador uh, and that's bringing in more of those colder temperatures back through the eastern United States and then that entire area of storminess shifts out to the east and now we're starting to see this uh, area of low pressure back through into the eastern Pacific start to move on shore of the west coast that's why the west coast is starting to deal with a little bit of colder weather and we're dealing with that ridge spiking up through the central part of the country and actually continuing to head a little bit further to the uh, further to the east and continuing to move further uh, continuing to move further to the east coast as well now that is uh, that is your uh, geopotential height and that's generally showing you in the higher parts of the atmosphere what you should be expecting uh, if we continue this forward a little bit, just a couple more frames, you can see that warm air really overtakes much of the country. Now, here's what the, uh, the Climate Prediction Center is showing for uh, this uh, warm outbreak for parts of the central part of the country. This is the next 6 to 10 days of uh, of the forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. This is from the 7th until the 11th, uh, and they're showing the probability of being above or below normal. You can see that fairly high probability back through the west coast and another area back through the southeast. But you can see that the rest of the country uh, from the central plains eastward, avoiding parts of the southeast, is where we're dealing with those warmer temperatures. Even up to a 90, uh, I believe that's, uh, yeah, that's a 90 to 100% chance of seeing above normal temperatures back through parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and some of the surrounding areas. So very, very likely that you're going to be above normal in many of these areas, especially right through this area here so really this is going to start to feel like you're in maybe late april may even maybe even in some of those areas june or july so really really warm temperatures 20 plus degrees above normal in some of these areas so uh definitely you're going to get more pleasant weather uh but you might also see a little bit more stormy activity as well as we go later down the road now here to be the 8 to 14 day outlook so this is from Tuesday until Monday, which is Tuesday the 9th until Monday the 15th, we're dealing with colder temperatures back through the western part of the country and warmer temperatures up through the uh, eastern two-thirds of the country, and you can see that centered over the Great Lakes according to the Climate Prediction Center. Now, here's their three to four-week outlook, which goes from the 13th through the 26th, and they're looking at a 70-plus percent chance anywhere within here, so this is your 70 percent chance area, and then your area of 60 plus percent chance is anywhere east of that pink line right there so you can see they have a fairly high probability of you seeing at least some above normal temperatures and most likely fairly above normal temperatures for those areas again the only area that's um, maybe has a chance of being below normal is going to be for parts of the west coast there that's where you have that shot of being a little bit colder than normal here's your risk of hazardous temperatures in terms of uh, the cold temperatures and you can see that's confined to parts of the west coast uh, uh, and mainly the western United States right in this shape right here we have a slight 20% risk from the 9th through the 15th of seeing hazardously cold temperatures and we even have a risk for snow a slight risk of heavy snow uh, as of right now which is about a 20 to 40 percent chance uh, from the 9th through the 10th uh, and we'll definitely continue monitoring that because it looks like the Sierra Nevadas could get another blast of rather chilly air combined with a storm system that might lead to uh, maybe a couple more feet of snowfall added on to what you've already seen uh, this winter season so that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.